What's going on guys? So I'm all set to finally start building the front three link on the budget YJ. Now, I already finished everything with the back four link and that's, that came out super good. I'm really happy with how it came out. It turned out exactly what I had in my mind. Hopefully I can do the same thing with the front. We'll see though. But as you see, I got the axle underneath the Jeep. It's centered. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I, I already kind of went over how I centered the axle using plumb bobs and some math in the other video for the four link. But I just did the same thing, hung the plumb bobs off the frame rails, and this time measured in from the inner C and got that measurement equal. Um, it's pretty easy, basic math to get that measurement. Um, but like I said, definitely go back and check out that four link video. I go into a little bit more detail with it. Now, uh, the other thing I did with this axle is I set it at zero degree pinion angle. And the reason for that is because I'm trying to maintain caster uh, I don't want to do a cut and turn on this. Uh, so in turn, I'll be running factory style U-joints, just two normal U-joints. Uh, and the way that I'm going to set up the links is to try to help me maintain caster uh, and under compression even gain some. So now that, that we kind of went through all that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do on this is I'm going to start getting the, the brackets for the lower links tacked into place. Uh, now, I cut this back about an inch and a half uh, just so I could get my links a little bit longer where I want them. And so it's going to sit right up against the skid plate right here. I have not cut off the old brackets from the leaf springs. And the reason for that is because I'm going to use that to get my measurements so I can make sure that they're the same on both sides. So I'm going to just go ahead and get this tacked into place. Um, I am going to be angling it out because these are full width axles. So I need it pointed outward a little bit just so that way it's in line with the uh, front link mounts off the axle. I'm going to tack the lower link mount onto the axle, which is a little backwards from how I built the rear four link. And, and there's a couple of reasons for that. And, I, and without getting into this rabbit hole of, of theory and, and thought and everything, uh, this all comes down to anti-dive, right? So in the rear, you got anti-squat. In the front, you have anti-dive. Now, I actually am putting this link a little bit higher because I'm trying to get my my lower link angle flatter and the reason for that is is because with your anti-dive you you want it lower um you know like it, if it was let's say at a hundred percent it when you hit the brakes your your jeep would not dive at all it would the suspension would fight it and keep the jeep flat and what that does is that doesn't allow for weight transfer to push down on the tires when you're hitting the brakes. And you, you find the Jeep easier to lock up the front tires and slide. Um, so a rule that I, I went over the rule a little bit with building link suspensions in the four link video. Um, and it's a great rule. I, I still follow it on the front. I think it works great on both front and rear builds. And that is maximum 10 degrees of lower link angle, flat when building the when you're building it, have the upper link perfectly flat, and then at the axle you want 25% of tire size for uh, link separation. Now, I actually tighten that up a bit for the front. I I push that number down to a maximum of six to seven degrees of lower link angle. I still go with the upper link flat during the build, and then I still want 25% if I could get it of link separation at the axle. Uh, that's 25% of tire size. Now, the reason for that is because is that's, that's what takes a lot of your stress off your link mounts, your links, and, and everything, um, and fights your, your axle wrap. 
And as I already stated, getting that lower link a little bit flatter is going to lower your anti-dive. So you're going to get back that, that dive under breaking. Um, you don't want it, you know, super, super low, but I've, I've, most of my builds, I, I seem to find them landing in the five to seven degree range and, and it works out really well. Um, you know, you're always going to come down to constraints. I talked about this a bit in the floor link video. The chassis is, is what's going to kind of dictate what you're able to do. Um, you just want to fight for what you can. So I'm going to actually be building the upper link mount on this. And I've already measured where the upper link, um, the mounting bracket for the frame is going to be at. And I've measured the upper, uh, it has three holes. So the very, very top hole is going to be at 29 inches from the ground. So I'm going to build the upper link on the axle to 29 inches from the ground. And that means that my lower link, I could push up as high as 19. Um, I did some math and found the slope of, of the uh, the lower link based off the chassis height and everything. And it's looking like I'm going to land about six degrees. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to mount this at 19. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut the DOM and I'm going to build both lower links and, and get it attached. Now, the only reason I'm, I'm doing it this way and not building it out of PVC like I did the rear is because this axle is pretty much where it has to be. I already know that I cannot push the axle any farther forward just because of steering constraints. Um, and I'm not going to be doing this setup with full hydro. So uh, the axle is pretty much where it has to go. If it was going to go anywhere, it would have to go back. And I'm going to build in about an inch of adjustability to pull the axle back if I need to. Uh, if for whatever reason it needs to go farther than that, I have extra inserts. Um, I'll cut them out and, and redo it if I actually have to shorten it that much. Uh, but where the axle is right now is, is pretty much exactly where I want it. And, and I'm going to be kind of doing everything I have to do to be able to make it live there. So let's go ahead and get the link in. Oh, dang it. So I didn't want to have to cut that off yet, but it's, it's in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and I got to cut back this bracket. So that way it's not in the way. Here's the upper link mount bracket that I said I was going to be making. Now, really all this is, is this is one of the universal mounts that, that Barnes sends out with their kits. And it's meant originally to mount on the tube. And I just did a bunch of measuring and got it figured out, cut the ends off of it. Um, and this should set me at the right height up off the top. I'm going to tack this in place for now. 
Um, and then just verify all the numbers and make sure that the link is flitting, sitting flat the way I want it to uh, before I burn it all the way in. all assembled i'm just gonna let this land where it needs to and that'll dictate where to attack the uh, bracket into place all right now that i got all the links built and everything's in and, and all the brackets are done uh, now, the next thing i got to worry about is going to be the track bar. Uh, now, it's a super important part of a three-link, but I'm actually going to do that in another video. Uh, the reason I'm going to do it in another video is because that needs to be designed and built with the steering. Um, it's really important that, that all your angles and everything on your steering and your track bar match. Uh, that way, you, they need to live in harmony. And I'm going to go into a lot more detail on, on figuring all that out in in the next video um so for now i'm gonna call it on this one i'm really happy that it's coming out uh hopefully you guys like subscribe go back check out some of the other videos and definitely keep an eye out for the future ones all right thanks guys